Okay, so uh, our today's lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can distinguish aldehydes and ketones. Then after that, I want us to do some synthetic, synthetic problems, right? Then after doing some, like we shall carry out some synthesis. Then after that, maybe we can have some other questions about carbonyl compounds for revision. Okay, which can be, so this session may take us long because I really want you to see how this thing, uh, how the questions this side are examined and how they are answered. Now, to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones, okay, uh, we need to know both of them, both of them, they show uh, or they form a yellow precipitate with blood is reagent. That is what you need first appreciate that both form a yellow precipitate with blood is reagent or the 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine. Mm -hmm. However, the two, when we are to differentiate or when we are to distinguish between the two, we can use uh, we can use Tollens reagent and a failing solution, okay? So, uh, as I've said, to distinguish them, distinguish between the two, we use Tollens reagent and failing solution. Now, uh, for this case, uh, it, I can draw a, maybe a simple, I can draw a simple summary where we have a reagent here, I draw a simple summary in tabular form. I have a reagent here we have maybe carbonyl compound. And then the observation. So we already looked at what failing solution does and what ammoniacal silver knife, uh, what ammoniacal silver knife does, all that tolerance reagent. When they say tolerance reagent, that is another way to mean ammoniacal silver nitrate solution. So uh, with ammoniacal silver nitrate solution, let me write using formulas, or tolerance reagent, uh, if the carbonyl compound is an aldehyde, For example, you can take ethanol, we form a silver mirror. We form a silver mirror on the sides of the test tube, on the wall of the test tube. But if it is a ketone with, a, with an aldehyde, you form a silver mirror, but with a ketone, uh, with a ketone, e.g., if you have like propanone, with a ketone, there is no observable change. There is no observable change with uh, a ketone. Then, meaning uh, aldehyde is so positive test with uh, ammoniacal silver nitrate, whereas the failing solution does not, or rather, whereas the uh, carbon uh, ketones do not. But if you use failing solution, uh, for aldehyde, All the high, the, high, the aldehydes, e.g., propanol, like CH3, CH2, CHO, that is propanol, 
it shows a reddish brown precipitate. Reddish brown precipitate. But the aldehyde called the benzaldehyde or benzene cabaldehyde, benzaldehyde, that is CHO, does not, so no observable change. Aliphatic aldehydes, they show a reddish brown precipitate, but benzaldehyde, which is aromatic, does not show any change, so there is no observable change. And all other ketones still, ketones do not need butanone, doesn't show anything, so no observable change. Now, uh, this is a case where you have uh, uh, where you have to distinguish between aldehydes and uh, ketones. Uh, of course, I, I will take you to, I will show you a case where a, a practical question can appear on analysis of aldehydes or ketones, okay? Uh, we are going to, to, to see how the practical analysis can be done on these compounds, but you need to really first understand how failing solution and toluenes reagent do act or do behave to, uh, to these carbonyl compounds, okay? Uh, before I go any further, uh, still, uh, ethanol, this ethanol, okay? Ethanol, uh, we can distinguish it from other aldehydes, all other aldehydes can be distinguished from ethanol, okay, and methyl ketones from other ketones by using iodoform test. Uh, I, it was our last lesson, our previous lesson had all those details of the reagents which I'm talking about, which I forwarded it to you. So ethanol, and Ethanol, we can distinguish ethanol, so ethanol can be distinguished from other aldehydes. And methyl ketones and methyl ketones from other ketones. by using iodoform test. Whereby here we use iodine solution and sodium hydroxide solution. So ethanol, we can distinguish ethanol because ethanol is an aldehyde. So we can distinguish it from other aldehydes by using iodoform. Also methyl ketones can be distinguished from other ketones by also using iodoform. For example, if you have a reagent here, we want to see examples of compounds distinguished. Examples of compounds distinguished. Then we shall need to see the observation. What observation do we make? Now, um, if the reagent is iodine solution, that is our iodoform reagent, iodine solution, and sodium hydroxide solution, and sodium hydroxide solution, then we warm and warm, that is our reagent, Examples of the substances distinguished. Ethanol is the only aldehyde that gives a positive test with this reagent. And the observation that we make 
the observation that we make is that we form a yellow precipitate with ethanol. A question would be, can they, when they want you to name the reagent, when they want you to name the reagent and then state the observation made when the reagent is treated with the compounds. So with ethanol only, ethanol is the only aldehyde that shows a positive test with the iodoform. But other aldehydes, all other aldehydes, uh, e.g., uh, you can consider propanol, all these ones, they show no change. So there is no observable change on treating the iodoform reagent with, uh, with the rest of the substances. So remember, if you are to remember very well what I discussed about iodoform last time, remember what I discussed about iodoform last time, I told you that iodoform reagent is used to separate, actually it is, it is used, okay? It is a positive, actually it is a positive test only for carbonyl compounds with a methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon. Methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon. So if there are other, other, other groups attached to the carbonyl carbon, it does not show a positive test. So here the methyl group must be attached to the carbon carbon. For example, for ethanol, you can see that it is CH3, then C, uh, H. The methyl group is attached to the carbonyl carbon. But for this case, this is the ethyl group attached to the carbon carbon, yet it is only positive for those compounds with a methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon. And we say that we form a yellow precipitate as a result of formation of triodomethane, which is a yellow precipitate. Okay. Um, then when you look at the others, these are for case of aldehydes. Then for ketones, ketone like CH3, COCH3 will show a positive test because the methyl groups are attached to the carbon or carbon. Okay. Even CH3, uh, CO, CH2, CH3 will show a positive test because the methyl, this methyl is attached to the carbon or carbon. Or if you consider the aromatic one, C6H5, COCH3, still this methyl is attached to the carbon or carbon. So all these, they show a positive test with iodoform and they form a yellow precipitate. But when it comes to other compounds like uh, CH3, uh, CH2, CO, CH2, CH3, these ones won't show iodoform, they won't show positive test because the methyl, these are not methyl groups and they are not, the methyl groups is, are not attached directly to the carbon or carbon. Even if you consider C6H5, CO, CH2, CH3, still this one cannot show a positive iodoform test. And in that case, we say no observable change. Why do I say they don't show positive change, positive test? Because the positivity of the test is manifested for the fact that the carbonyl group must be a methyl. For example, if a question comes and you want you to distinguish or to name the reagent that can be used to distinguish CH3, CHO, Okay, and uh, CH3, CH2, CHO. Uh, the reagent, you write iodine solution and sodium hydroxide solution. Full stop. Observation with this, a yellow precipitate. With this, no observable change. If they wanted to write the equation, I, sh I wrote the equations in the session when I was handling the reactions of these substances. So it's a matter of uh, uh, harmonizing the chemistry behind this. Before I do an analysis question, uh, let's first uh, summarize the uses of these carbonyl compounds. Um, just outlining them. Uh, for example, methanol, 
methanol is used in uh, preserv preservation of biological specimens. Uh, we use ethanol in the manufacture of ethanoic acid. We use propanone in the manufacture of uh, perspex, uh, plastics. Mm. We use benzaldehyde in uh, scenting the soap. Uh, that can scent of soap. We use benzaldehyde in flavoring food, manufacture of dyes, and some antibiotics, and very many others. So I want us to do some, I want us to do some simpler conversions. Okay, so let's have some guiding questions about these things. And we do them here together. Guiding questions. And we shall begin with those of censuses. We shall begin with the synthesizing. Okay. So write equations. Write equations. To show how the following conversions can be effected. Ah. Now, before I start this, before I start this. The questions of, you know, of organic chemistry are very clear. It can be a conversion, it can be a mechanism, and it can begin a small concept coming. So we are going to look at all those cases, but with respect to carbonyl compounds. Now, I'm assuming they want us to, to take Mm. Assuming they want us to take uh, CH2, CH2OH, they want us to take it to C, CH3, N, NH, ah, if they want you to synthesize this, of course, you realize that uh, here there is some um, application of phenyl hydrazine. Hmm? We are going to add a phenyl hydrazine, meaning first form, uh, first form a, a carbonyl compound from alcohols. So, of course, what we do, we know that alcohols can be converted to alkenes, because here you may not oxidize an alcohol direct. This is a primary alcohol. And as you can see, you can see that here, we need some secondary alcohol. We need to oxidize secondary alcohol, okay? Because there are secondary alcohols that can be oxidized to ketones, which ketones can react with phenyl hydrazines to form such compounds. So what we do, first get that primary alcohol, CH2, CH2OH, all right, add concentrated sulfuric acid at 180 degrees Celsius. We shall form an alkene, CH, CH2. After forming an alkene, we can form a secondary alcohol by acid hydrolysis. So we shall add an acid, dilute acid, 
water, and then we warm. You need to note that for synthesis, we must use the shortest route, and we have to correctly arrange these reagents. If you begin with water, then hydrogen, it looks weird. But for oxidizing agents, you begin with an oxidizing agent, then hydrogen. So this one will form a secondary alcohol, OH, CH3. Now, this secondary alcohol can be oxidized. You can use any strong oxidizing agent, CR2072 minus acid, then you heat. And this one will form a carbonyl compound. After forming the carbonyl compound, one can do that. Mm. Or one can write, one can write it as this. Then it is this one now that we can apply uh, hydrazine, but phenyl hydrazine because uh, you see that uh, this CH3 will come here, this O this O will be taken by an acid, so we must apply a phenyl hydrazine. NH, NH2 in place of an acid, and this one will be able to give us the final product, the right product. Now, that is not enough for you to understand the things. You need to know mechanisms, how to write mechanisms on every part. You need to know how to write a mechanism of converting an alcohol to an alkene. You need to know the mechanism of converting an alkene to an alcohol again using these reagents. You need to know, of course, here the mechanism is not examined, but you need to know how to convert this ketone to the final product. So you need to know this mechanism. That way you can understand this one very, very better. Then, uh, let's do more, let's do more sensor switches. Mm -hmm. What of, what of if you are converting CH3, CH, double bond CH2, to, to methyl propanoic acid, CH. Two, two hydroxyl, two methyl propanoic, Acid. So here we are having so they can give you statements. They can say propene to two hydroxy methyl propanoic, two hydroxy two methyl propanoic acid. Now for this case, for you know that uh, you know that this alkene can be oxidized by acidified chromium six oxide to a ketone that is propanone. So you can do this. We can have CH3, CH double bond, CH2, okay, add chromium six oxide, acidified, of course heat, you form your propanone CH3, C O CH3. How do you know this? When we are starting, we look at laboratory preparation. When you're looking at laboratory preparation, you find how to obtain uh, ketones from alkenes. So the reagent is this. Right now from there, we shall treat this one with uh, potassium cyanide, 
and dilute sulfuric acid at 20 degrees Celsius. This reagent gives us, uh, gives us hydrogen cyanide. So we shall form a cyanohydrin, we shall form CH3C, then CN, then uh, OH, then CH3. Now, here to form the product from this, we shall add conch hydrochloric acid and we reflux at 50 degrees Celsius. We form your, we form your product. Okay, so meaning that the students should be aware to, should be knowing how to obtain carboxylic acid or hydroxyl carboxylic acids from a cyanide. Uh, very many, one can give you to convert uh, CH3, okay, CO, CL, that you take it to ethanol. How do you take this to ethanol? It means you need to first convert this to analdehyde. You see, it is convertible, analdehyde. How do you convert it to analdehyde? You need to know now how to prepare aldehydes from uh, 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 acid chlorides. Mm -hmm. From acid chlorides, sorry. So if we get this ethanol chloride, and we react it with uh, hydrogen, okay, in presence of poisoned, that is in the preparation, it is a method in the preparation, poison the lead, and uh, we add barium sulfate as a catalyst, then we heat, it automatically be converted to ethanol, CH3, CHO, ethanol. You need to note the reagent. We add hydrogen, we poison the lead in place of barium sulfate. We form ethanol. Then this ethanol can be reduced because we know that primary alcohols oxidize to aldehydes, meaning that aldehydes are reduced to primary alcohols. So we shall put a reducing agent, which reducing agent can be lithium tetrahydroaluminate, or which you call lithium aluminium hydride in presence of dry ether and you form your ethanol CH3, CH2, OH. Before I take you to further census members, I really want to tell you that you have to practice these things. You have to practice this work from the bottom of your heart. However, let me still do you some other part and you see how we can do. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we convert. This is the most interesting conversion. How we convert CH2CH2Br to benzaldehyde. <clears throat> now here a student can look at very, very many things. One can look at first forming an alcohol by adding sodium hydroxide, then you oxidize an alcohol to a carboxylic acid, then you add the soda lime to decarboxylate, you form methyl benzene, then methyl benzene we shall add a mild, we can add any mild oxidizing agent like chromium dichloride dioxide, right? So, uh, it can work better that way. Let's, let me first try that. Mm. If I have CH2, CH2, BR, uh, I will form by adding sodium hydroxide, aqueous and heat, I will form an alcohol, CH2, CH2OH, 
Then from here, I add an oxidizing agent, Sierra 2072 minus, even one can use manganate, heat, you form a carboxylic acid, CH2, H. After forming a carboxylic acid, we can add soda lime to decarboxylate. So we shall say soda lime, heat, you had decarboxylated it to methyl benzene. After forming the methyl benzene, we add a mild oxidizing agent, CrO2Cl2. We take it to benzaldehyde. Here, one can use another uh, oxidizing agent. One can opt to use a uh, <clears throat> one can opt to use a uh, acidified manganese for oxide. Still, it will give you benzaldehyde. Or else, if one doesn't want to use this route, from here, one can add magnesium, depends of dry ether. And when you do that, you form uh, CH2, CH2, MGBR. Um, mm -hmm. Then from there, we shall add water and dilute acid, and there we shall form uh, phenylethane. Then from here, we can oxidize this. And when we oxidize it, it says three here. When we oxidize this, we can add the permanganate acid, then heat. It will be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. Mm. Carboxylic acid can be reduced to alcohol by adding lithium aluminium hydride and dry ether. This one will go to uh, CH2OH. Now, uh, after having formed this alcohol, by adding uh, chromium-6 oxide, acidified chromium-6 oxide, and then I heat, still you form your benzyl, you form your benzyl height. So there are too many uh, mechanisms or there are too many routes one can use. I'm still synthesizing. I'm still synthesizing. And after synthesizing, I want us to do the questions which involve reagents, but with respect to our, our, our carbonyl compounds, then we see. Now, uh, from here, uh, let me, guys, type yes if you're with me so that we see. To get to all this, you need to have revised. You need to have read. To get to all this, you need to have read. You need to have read. So um, let us have more of these. Um, now let me go to another. Still, we are doing synthesis. We are writing equations. I want us to see how we can get propanone. From propane. Then how we can get propene from propanone. Mm -hmm. How we can get bromithene from benzaldehyde? Mm -hmm. How we can get ETC, but let's 
let's try this. Then I show you the questions with the distinguishing properties. Uh, now, when you look at uh, this, mm -hmm. let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Propanon from propine. Propanon from propine. Mm. Now, propanon from propine. I told you that the basic thing is to first count the number of carbons of the starting material and the ones of the ending material. But because they are all propanon derivatives, they are all uh, propane derivatives, it means they have three carbons. So there, there is nothing like increasing the chain or decreasing it. So here, what we shall do, we shall have our propine, CH3, CH triple bond C. Eh, 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 eh. Sorry. A propine CH3, C triple bond CH. That is our propine. We are taking it to propanone. So we need to first convert it to an alkene because alkenes can be taken to alcohols, which alcohols can be oxidized to carbon ion compounds. So we shall add hydrogen in place of Lindler catalyst at room temperature. This one will take it from being propene, rather propine to propene. So it will be CH3. CH double bond CH2. Now we can convert this to an alcohol. One, we can add conch sulfuric acid. Two, we can put water and heat. A student can say acidified water. A student can write H water and then heat. Still, that student is okay. So here you'll form a secondary alcohol. So CH3. CHOH, then CH3. So here, by oxidizing this, we shall add an oxidizing agent. Okay, I will add CR2, O7, 2 minus hydrogen and heat. I'll form my propanon, which is CH3, COCH3. If you're with me on this, type yes. Show me on that, type yes, and I see you. We are revising. Then B, they want propene from propanone. So you have propanone, CH3, CO, CH3. They want us to get propene. So, but you know that ketones are reducible secondary alcohols. Being a ketone, it can be reduced to a secondary alcohol. So what we do, we shall reduce this propanone to uh, propan, uh, propan to all. So by adding lithium, aluminum, hydride as a reducing agent in terms of dry ether, we shall form a second alcohol, secondary alcohol, CH, OH, CH3. Then um, here, if you want this one to be taken to propene, we shall add an acid at 180, conch sulfuric acid at 180 degrees Celsius will form CH3, CH double bond CH2. That way you're done. Yes, as uh, what I will maybe do in the next lesson, I will just look at how to use these reagents. I will summarize for you these reagents so that you know when to use which reagent. Okay.
Um, then we also have, we want to get bromoethane from benzaldehyde. How do we get bromoethane from benzaldehyde? Mm -hmm. Now you have brom, you have benzaldehyde, CHO. We want to take it to bromoethane. So what do we do? First, reduce this to an alcohol by adding lithium aluminum hydride or lithium tetrahydride aluminate in terms of dry ether, and we shall form an alcohol, CH2 or H. After forming this alcohol, we can add hydrogen bromide at room temperature and we form our bromoethane. As simple as that. Yes, so which other conversion? Which other conversion? Hmm? What is the last part saying? I think it is butanone from ethanol. Ethanol, they want us to take ethanol to what? To butanone. Okay, so yes. it was uh, CH3, CH2, or H. They want us to take it to, they want us to take it to CH3, uh, CH2, C, CH3. Is it? Is it that one? Yes. Okay, now you can first see that here carbons are two and here carbons are four. So we shall need to increase a chain somewhere, somehow. Now, but what we need to do, we cannot increase a chain when it is not an alkyne. You need to first convert this from ethanol to propyne. So we need to first take it an alkene, then from an alkene we take it an alkyne, then from an alkyne we increase the chain to get four carbons. So we shall form an alkyne with four carbons, then we hydrolyze the alkyne to form a ketone. Interesting, this is the most interesting thing. So what do we do, we shall add from this, we are going to first convert it to an alkene, so we shall add conch sulfuric acid at 180 degrees Celsius. Okay, we shall form an alkyne, so it will be CH2, double bond CH2. After forming this alkyne, we shall need to take the alkyne to an alkene. Uh, it is an alkene, so you are taking an alkene to an alkyne. How do we do that? We first add bromine in terms of tetrachloromethane at room temperature, even this one eight would be this side at room temperature. And for that case, we shall form a dibromoethane, hmm? a dihalohalkane. So we shall form BR, CH2, CH2, BR. After forming a dihalohalkane, we add, we have to add, okay? Uh, alcoholic potassium hydroxide or alcoholic sodium hydro hydroxide, okay? And then we heat. By doing this, we are forming an alkyne. So you need to know how to obtain alkynes in this perspective. So we shall form CH, triple bond CH. I'm taking it an alkyne because I want to increase the carbon chain. If I'm to increase this carbon chain, I will add sodium in this in presence of liquid ammonia. So I add sodium in liquid ammonia and automatically it will give me a, 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 a propynitrile, which will be CH, triple bond, C minus, Na plus. After forming this sort, now you can add an alkyl group 
or you can add an alkyl compound that has the number of carbons you want. Since we are left with the two carbons, because it's one, two, but we need four. So we can add bromoethane, CH3, CH2, BR. Okay, you can add bromoethane. And in this case, you're going to form CH3, CH2, C, triple bond, CH. But you know that you can hydrolyze alkynes to uh, uh, to, 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 to carbonyl compounds by using dilute sulfuric acid in presence of mercury sulfate at 60 degrees Celsius. You form your product. In other words, you need to be knowing the mechanism that takes you from here up to this side. And that is how you would do that conversion. If it is understood, type yes. You need to really undergo this series of events to come to the final answer. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to give a question that has distinguishing and we apply the simple skills we have obtained talk about uh, a distinguishing compound. So, mm, mm -hmm. well, here is a question about distinguishing. So name the reagent. you would use to distinguish the following compounds. State what would be observed In each case, of course, if the reagent is treated with the, the components. So the first one is CH3, CH2, CO, CH3, and CH3, CH2, CH2CHO. Mm -hmm. The second one is CH3, CH2, COCH2, CH3, and CH3, CO, CH2, CH3. The third one is CH3, CHO, and CH3. CH2OH, um, let me see if you can figure out. Yeah, CH3, CHO, and CH3, CH2CHO. Then uh, I can give this. Benzaldeha, no, CO, CH3, and CH, CH3, OH. Now, you cannot tell the distinguishing reagent when you have not recognized, okay? When you have not recognized whether it is a ketone or an aldehyde, mm, you need to really, uh, you need to really confirm. You need to know, is it an aldehyde? Is it a ketone and then which reagent? So for you to know an aldehyde or a ketone, you need to know uh, the group. This is CO, meaning it is a C, uh, or bond O. 
This is a ketone. This is a ketone. This is an aldehyde. So, mm. so for that particular case, which reagent do you think would distinguish the first pair? Which reagent do you think would distinguish the first pair? Because this one has a methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon, and this one does not. The moment you say carbonyl, the moment you say a methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon, just know you will use iodoform reagent. So here, the reagent would be for the first one, the reagent would be iodine solution. Sodium hydroxide. In presence of sodium hydroxide solution, in presence of sodium hydroxide solution. Observations, <clears throat> the way you said observations matter. Say so observations <clears throat> with this CH2C, CH3, CH2, CO, CH3, we observe a yellow precipitate, yellow precipitate. While, while this, there is no observable change. <clears throat> that is one. For Romani two, which reagent would you use? All of them are ketones, but you can see the difference. This methyl group, is attached to the carbonyl carbon. Well, here we don't have methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon, meaning still the reagent is the same, but this one will show a yellow precipitate, while this one will show no observable change. We shall have a yellow precipitate here, no observable change here. Is it very clear, members? I'm looking at the methyl group, and the, the, these ones I'm just, I'm just able, or oh, I'm observing them very fast because of the because of the way they are organized, methyl to the carbonyl. Okay. Then for part C, this is an aldehyde, this is an alcohol. Mm -hmm. an aldehyde and an alcohol. So here one can use very many different tests. Uh, one can use uh, even, uh, one can use a solution of 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine, don't say blood is reagent, 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine and sulfuric acid. That one is the one that forms blood is reagent. But this one being an, a carbonyl compound, it will show a positive test. So this one will show a yellow precipitate while an alcohol will have no observable change. See this one being an aldehyde, if one uses the ammoniacal silver nitrate, hmm, if one uses ammoniacal silver nitrate here, if one uses ammonia silver nitrate, this one will show uh, a silver mirror, while this one will show no observable change. Someone is like, I pardon on Romani 2. We say that the moment you see a methyl group attached to the carbonyl carbon, you must use iodoform reagent, which is iodine solution in presence of sodium hydroxide solution. So this is CH3CO, meaning the methyl is attached to the carbonyl carbon. So it will show a positive test. It will form a yellow precipitate with the iodoform. While this will have no observable change. Mm -hmm. Then even when you look at the CH3, CHO, CH3, CH2, CHO, all these are aldehydes. But this aldehyde has a methyl attached to the carbonyl carbon, while these ones, while this one does not meaning that this one will show 
a positive test with iodoform, but the reagent is iodine solution in presence of sodium hydroxide solution. Observation, yellow precipitate, no observable change. They are both aldehydes, but this one has a meter attached to the carbon or carbon, which is not the same here. Mm -hmm. Then here you have a ketone and, and a secondary alcohol. So yeah, still we are going to use a solution of 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine and sulfuric acid. For this carbonyl compound, we shall see a yellow precipitate while here, no observable change. So that is how we do state observations. That's how we do state observations. Now, I'm looking at a possibility of doing for you uh, an organic analysis. Uh, let me make it next time. Maybe I can give you a general question on this thing and we do it together. Here, I can give a general question and we do it together. Mm. Mm. So being revision, let's have this question. Compound W. with molecular formula C3 H6O forms forms aerosolid when <clears throat> reacted with Two four dinitrophenyl hydrazine W doesn't react with a solution of silver nitrate in ammonia. That is ammoniaco, silver nitrate. Mm -hmm. So the question part A is, write the structure formula of W. By me telling you that it does not react with a solution of silver nitrate in ammonia, meaning it does not form a silver mirror, then it, is, it can't be an aldehyde, meaning it is a ketone. So in other words, when you're answering such questions, you need to have the whole idea about the compounds, their reactions, their mechanisms, their synthesis. You need to have general knowledge about a class, which is very, very easy. B, write, an equation for the reaction between W and blood is reagent. There is no A and blood is reagent. Mm -hmm. Suggest a mechanism for the reaction. Suggest a mechanism for the reaction. Then part C, write an equation 
to show how W could be prepared in the laboratory, be prepared in the laboratory from propan to all, from propan to all. Ah. So um, they have given us uh, Yeah, they have given us uh, the reaction, right? They have given us a compound. I've told you that since it does not react with the ammoniacal silver nitrate, it means that it can't be an aldehyde. Then it is a ketone. So a case where you're having it as a ketone, then now it means that our compound would be since there are three carbons, so it will be CH3, C double bond, or CH3. That is our ketone. Then they are saying that we write the equation for the reaction with uh, Brady's reagent. Eh? Brady's reagent. That is two, four the nitrophenyl hydrazine. So we shall have our ketone, I can write it as this, opanone plus 2,4, the nitrophenyl hydrazine, I can write it like this. Two, four, one, two, so nitro group is here. Another one is on the fourth carbon, then O2, then hydrazine. We shall have H2N, NH. Ah, of course, it must be in terms of an acid, sulfuric acid. That is what forms that is reagent. The product one may not be sure. So you could first write the, the, mechanism, the mechanism to be sure. But since I am very sure, it is H3, 2, then C, N, NH. Then uh, NO2, NO2 plus water. We are going to outline this mechanism together very fast. And then we see how best we can uh, move. All right. And um, now looking at this mechanism here, we are having uh, a carbonyl compound, which is uh, our propanone. We are reacting it with 2,4-dinatophenyhydrazine. Allow me, I'll try the mechanism in this sense. Mechanism, though it is already in our lesson, but since we are revising, so we are going to have uh, CH3, C double bond, then CH3. Since it is acidified, we shall have an acid first. Uh, so here we shall form CH3, C, then double bond, OH with a plus, then C, H3. Now what happens here? is that we'll bring your reagent. So we are bringing our reagent, which I can draw in a different order from what I wrote on the arrows, but I can have my, um, my hydrazine group here. Then I uh, can have my NO2 and another NO2 here. So, ah, uh, the round pairs on nitrogen will attack the positive carbon. Then one bond here will go. And this way, I will form, uh, mm, yeah, I will form 
I draw my benzene. I put my O2 N, then another N O2. This, the nitro groups don't, will not react in this perspective. So we are going to have NH. Then when nitrogen loses electrons, it becomes positively charged, right? So I will have the hydrogen here. I will have another hydrogen here because it is NH2, okay? It is NH2. Then on that, I will attach the carbon, this carbon, uh, which carbon is having CH3 and another CH3 still with an OH. Uh, so what happens is that the lone pairs on oxygen here pick the hydrogen, or one can denote it as hydrogen shift, then this bond will stabilize the nitrogen, which is positive here. So this one will lead to the formation of, mm, shall form, O2 N, N O2, N H, N H, because one oxygen, one hydrogen has been taken. So then here we shall form C, then O H2, because hydrogen has been picked and taken to O H, so it is O H2, then C H3, then C H3. Again, the only pairs on this nitrogen will introduce a double bond here. Of course, this is plus as the water goes off. So in this case, I have lost water. And when you lose water, we shall have... Um, we shall have uh, NH. Uh, NO2, NO2, so this is the NH that is there, then now uh, we are having N with a positive hydrogen, Y positive, it has lost electrons, but introduced a double bond here, water has gone, so we shall have C, uh, CH3, CH3 plus that water that was lost. So here, by losing hydrogen, we can lose the hydrogen ion from here. After losing the hydrogen, we form our final product, which is uh, o O2N, then O2, NH, N, Double bond C. Yeah, I can say CH3, two, like that. So that is what we are supposed to have. Right. There are very, very, very many questions, but all of them derive from what we have already looked at. Uh, by playing those previous videos about the lessons, you can understand this better. Interestingly, let me do the last part of the question. We want us to write the equation to show how propanone can be formed from uh, propan to all. So if you have propan to all, that last part, that's it. If you have propan to all, CH3, CH, OH, CH3 by oxidizing it, just oxidize CR2O7 to minus acid heat. You form your propanone, CH3. Uh, you form your compound. So as simple as this. So now the logic here of these questions, they can move a question and they make it start from you getting the empirical formula. They bring in the aspect of colligative properties. You get the molecular formula. They ask you for the structural formula, maybe after telling you about the properties of that compound. Then they can bring in certain reactions and they want you to write the equations for the mechanisms, everything. Ah, so organic questions can be set variantly. 
depending on the interest of an examiner, depending on the interest of a set. If you have any question, ask. But the next lesson of organic chemistry will be, we shall look at organic analysis, how we attempt an organic chemistry question when it is in a practical format. That is what we shall look at and we shall consider some of the past questions, some of the past questions, past paper questions. So if you have any question, ask, and we go ahead. Okay, so if no questions, I'm going to send you some exercise and you do it, you send, we see through. I wish you all the best. See you again.